As we know, Pokemon Home's compatibility with Scarlet and Violet has recently just dropped, and with it comes a bunch of new Pokemon we can use in the games. In today's video, I'm gonna go through the best solo builds from all of the transferable Pokemon into Scarlet and Violet to make farming Terror Raids and beating these Terror Raid bosses super easy in Scarlet and Violet. So we know there are about 90 plus Pokemon that are now transferable from Pokemon Home into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I've been through each and every one of them and I've come up with about 22, 23 Pokemon that I feel are gonna be suitable for going into five, six and seven star Terror Raids to beat these Pokemon pretty easily in your game. Of course, this is not my usual recording place. At the moment, I'm over in Torino in Italy. I will be commentating for the special event this weekend. So I'm in a hotel room. That is the reason for it, but we're still here bringing you content on the go. So I'm gonna get into it now. And the first Pokemon that we're gonna cover, we're gonna cover all the Hisuian Pokemon. Also all the Pokemon that we do feature in these builds are level 100. All the details with everything that we go over, EVs, IVs, everything else like movesets will all be down in the description below if you want to check that out for yourself after the video. So Arcanine now with the Hisuian form is going to be Fire and Rock. We're going with the Rock Terra typing on this one to take advantage of that Rock typing. We've got the Shell Bell item as a line of recovery on this Pokemon, it's always good. And then the moveset on this one is going to be Morning Sun, Howl, Flare Blitz and Head Smash. And the reason for Head Smash is because of the ability that Hisuian Arcanine gets, and that is that Rockhead ability, which protects the user from any recoil damage from recoil causing moves like Head Smash. So Head Smash is a base 150 rock type attack. It does have a bit of a lower accuracy, but the reward for using such a high base power attack is so good, especially in these raid battles. It normally comes with recoil, but because of the Rockhead ability, you negate that. You don't even need to worry about that at all, which is great in a raid where you're doing really big damage. Same thing can be said for Flare Blitz as well, which does come with recoil, but you don't need to worry with it with that ability. The basic premise of this moveset is to try and get like two to three Howls off. You're not only going to boost your own attack by getting the Howls off, but you'll boost your partnering Pokemon as well. So this Pokemon could be something that you could take online as well and use to really good effect. Morning Sun gives you a line of recovery outside the Shell Bell and we have an EV spread of 252 HP with 252 attack and an adamant nature. So that is the Arcanine. Next up, one of my favorite designs is Hisuian Lilligan. It is going to be a grass and fighting type Pokemon. We went for the grass terror typing on this. I got to give a big shout out to my good friend Bevum for providing me with this Hisuian Lilligan for this build video. We've got the expert belt as the item of choice on here and then the move set of Swords Dance, Synthesis, Sunny Day and Solar Blade. We've got an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack with an adamant nature and the ability Chlorophyll. So the basic premise with this is going to be Swords Dancing three times at the start of the battle, trying to max out your attack and then get a Sunny Day up and then you can fire off those Solar Blades. Solar Blade is normally a two turn attack where it takes a turn to charge and then the next turn it will attack. It is base 125, so a really strong, powerful attack but with the sun in effect you skip the turn of charge and you can just attack constantly so as long as the sun's active on the field just bear in mind you're going to be able to kind of fire off the solar blades freely every turn you can also utilize the sun with that chlorophyll ability to double your speed and you're also going to be able to use synthesis to max recover your hp points which normally would only do 50 percent when the sun isn't active so you are quite reliant on the sun with this set but i do feel like it's a very strong set and once you can terrestrialize once again a little bit like that is Suyan Arcanine, you're gonna be able to launch some big damage off with that solar blade, especially with the sword stances under your belt. Remember with this one, it is a grass terror typing and it is gonna be very good against those bulky water terror type Pokemon that you come up against in those raid battles. Next up, we have one of the most talked about Pokemon, I think coming in from Pokemon Legends Arceus and that is gonna be Ursa Luna and it is a ground and normal type, a full evolution of uh, Ursa Ring and we went for the ground terror typing and we went for the held item here of the flame orb now i would say probably in testing 
I found the shell bell to be more optimal because I found the recovery, the line of recovery that shell bell offered you a little more beneficial. Now it will depend on the raids that you're going into. If you're going against something like an Amoongus, you're probably gonna want the flame orb because the nice thing about the flame orb is it takes up that status turn. After turn one, you're gonna be burnt and then you can't be put to sleep or anything like that. So you're not affected by yawn. It's a really good option to go into Pokemon like Torkoal in particular that do utilize that yawn or a number of other things so the flame orb is what we've got on this set but like i say if you find the flame orb a little bit lackluster and you miss that recovery just change it up to the shell bell item and then we do have the move set of belly drum headlong rush which is a signature ground type attack drain punch and facade so with that guts ability of course like we've already mentioned that plays off that flame orb item when the flame orb activates when you do get affected by a status like burn like poison then you get a 1.5 boost to your attack that stacks with the belly drum as well so you're going to be doing huge damage and obviously facade as well is one of those moves if you are burned or poisoned or paralyzed then this move's power is doubled going to 140 power so it's a really really strong attack and just generally normal typing is very good unless you're going up against like a steel terror type or a rock terror type or a ghost terror type but everything else is going to hit really good damage you've got drain punch as a kind of line of recovery i guess but as it's not a stab move you're not really going to be getting the best benefit out of it like you would be off iron hands or uh, annihilate or something like that and then headlong rush which plays off that terror typing going to be a big ground type attack that's going to do a massive damage just beware with the headlong rush it does reduce your defense and special defense every time you use it so just use it sparingly when you use it but that is ursaluna and i do really like this pokemon it is very good but i wouldn't say it's one of the best pokemon that we've got from hisui from that legends arceus games but a very good one nonetheless next up is cleaver the bug and rock type evolution of scyther i love the design of this pokemon we went for a rock terror typing just like that hisui and arcanine and we have the shell bell item on there as always for a line of recovery when we're in these terror raids the moveset we've got is Leah, Stone Axe, Ex Scissor, and Swords Dance, and we have the hidden ability Sharpness. And Sharpness boosts all slicing type attacks by 1.5. So anything that comes under the slicing category, things like Stone Axe, things like Ex Scissor, will be boosted with this ability. So the basic premise of this moveset is to try and get three sword stances off and then utilize Leah before the shield goes up to reduce the defense stat by one stage every time you use it on the target Pokemon or the Terra Boss, um, and then try and get those Stone Axes off to do some big damage, of course, when you're boosted up. And obviously with the defense drops as well, stacking, making your damage output even more. As soon as you can terrestrialize, you're gonna be able to stack those up a lot higher and you're gonna be doing some really, really big damage with Cleaver. It's a decent attack in Pokemon. We've got an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack, and then the rest dumped in special defense. But that is Cleaver and I do like it. A very unique typing, I think, and with that Rock Terror typing, can do some good work against a lot of kind of common terror types that we see in six star raids or five star raids so it makes farming these items a lot easier next up is hisuian zoroark the normal and ghost type and probably one of the most unique typings that we've got in the pokerverse uh, we went for the ghost terror typing on this because we're taking advantage of its ghost stab attacks shell bell is the item of choice again because we need that line of recovery to keep it on the field after we set up and the move set that we've got is fake tears nasty plot taunt and bitter malice bitter malice is its ghost type signature attack it is a base 75 power attack but it does have the added bonus of reducing the attack stat on the opposing target every time it hits it basic premise with this is if your opponent is likely to set up or start boosting itself or disrupting with yawns or whatever then taunt turn one Go for those three fake tiers that will reduce the special defense on the target pokemon by two every time you use it then boost yourself up your special attack by two stages every time you use it with nasty plot and then start firing off those bit analysis is pretty straightforward and then you can terrestrialize and take full advantage of that ghost typing as well unfortunately we can't change the ability on Hisuian Zoroark it is stuck with that one ability which is illusion which is not really too useful in terror raids but the EV spread that we've got on this one is 252 HP and 252 special attack just maximizing our HP stat longevity and then maximizing our damage output as well with that modest nature and finally for our Hisuian Pokemon Pokemon, we have got Enamorous, the new genie Pokemon, the 
fairy and flying type. We've got the terror type fairy, and I think this one's probably my favorite, probably the most strong Hisuian Pokemon that we've got for terror raids, in my opinion. We've got the Shell Bell again for a line of recovery because it lacks any sort of recovering move. Uh, level 100 with the moveset in prison, Iron Head, Play Rough and Superpower. We have the ability Contrary and we have an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack with an adamant nature. But the, the big thing about this moveset is the Contrary, which is the hidden ability on the Enamorous. So the big thing here is any stat drops actually get reversed and then become stat boosts. And any stat boosts actually get reversed and become stat drops. So this is where you come in with superpower. Once every time you use it, it drops your attack and your defense by one stage. Now with the combination with contrary, it actually boosts your attack and defense every time you use it. So initially setting you up and making you even stronger every turn. Uh, the basic premise is to use this three times and then you can terrestrialize. You'll be plus three attack, plus three defense, and then you can start utilizing those player roughs. Now in prison is here, it's just a bit of a quirky pick. You could go for something like taunt if you want something a bit more reliable or another coverage move that it gets access to. But I do like the idea of having it in prison here so you can stop any opposing steel type threats. Say if you've got a fairy terror type King Gambit, for instance, it is gonna have access to iron. Head. Now, if you use Imprison at the start of the battle, it's not going to have access to Iron Head for the rest of the game, meaning that you're not going to have to deal with that super effective attack coming from the raid boss, allowing you to kind of get your superpowers off to the point where you can terrestrialize and then you can freely use that player off after that. And the nice thing about setting up as you're attacking as well, it's ticking down the turns before you can terrestrialize. And that's one of the main reasons why I really like Enamorous. I think it's a really great Pokemon. We are keeping it, like I say, in that incarnate form. So don't worry about changing it with the reveal glass to its Ethereum form. Um, but this is the build for it. And I think you'll have a lot of success with this one if you do build it in your games. With the Hisuian Pokemon out the way, we can start with some of the other Pokemon available. And we're starting off with probably one of my favorite legendary Pokemon for terror raid battles at the minute and that is going to be Ice Rider Calyrex. That is where you fuse Calyrex and uh, Galastria together to get the Ice Rider Calyrex. It is a psychic and ice type. We've got the ice terror typing on here and the shell bell as the item for a line of recovery of course level 100 and the moveset of Swords Dance, Tail Whip, Icicle Crash and Glacial Lance which is its signature attack ice type attack we've got the as one ability which is like unnerve and chilling rain combined so you've got two abilities in one but the chilling rain ability is the main one although not that useful in raids because you're only going to be knocking out the raid boss once so you're not really going to benefit from any of the boosts unless you decide to target your partnering pokemon to get boosts which could be quite something you could use quite smart way to utilize that ability basic premise of this uh, move set is going to be two sword stance three times up boost your max out your attack and then utilize Tail Whip that lowers the defense on the attacking Pokemon by one stage every time you use it. And then you can use that like a couple of times and then start firing off those Glacial Lances uh, until you can terrestrialize. And then you're gonna be able to maximize the damage. This thing hits like an absolute truck. We've got a Adamant Nature on it with an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack and the rest dumped in special defense, but it is so bulky. It's such a bulky Pokemon. Look at the stat spread on it. It is a legendary Pokemon, of course, but it hits like a truck and you're gonna have no problem in Terror Raids. For the most part, you don't even need to set up most of the time. If you're going up against something like a ground Terror type Pokemon or something else like a dragon Terror type Pokemon, you're gonna be doing so big damage. You, for most of the part, you're not really gonna need to boost up with Sword Stance but it does make it a lot quicker. And this Pokemon really runs through Terror Raids, especially those six star ones. And um, so this one I do really like, and this is the Ice Rider Calyrex. Next up, another favorite of mine is Galarian Zapdos. So this Galarian Zapdos of fighting and flying type, we went for the fighting terror type on this Zapdos, and it is holding the Shell Bell item, level 100 with the move set, bulk up, focus energy, drill peck, and thunderous kick. Now the signature move on the Zapdos is thunderous kick. Every time you use this attack on your opponent, it drops their defense by one stage. So it's really useful at almost powering you up every turn that you use it. And it still works through the shield. So when the shield goes up on the raid boss, you can still lower that defense every time you use it. You're kind of putting this in combination with the bulk up. You've got drill peck for a little bit of coverage if you need it. Focus energy was just a filler move. So you can put anything there, but the focus energy is kind of nice. If you've got room to set it up, 
just to boost your critical hit chances, it is quite nice. But Galarian Zapdos has been incredible when I've been using it and testing with it. It's run through so many six star raids, it's unreal, and it does it very quick as well. With that Defiant ability, so if you get affected by any Pokemon that use moves that drop, your stats, you're gonna get an attack boost, which means you're gonna be getting through these raids even quicker, doing more damage. EV spread, pretty straightforward, 252 HP, 252 attack with an adamant nature, and that is the Galarian Zapdos. Next up, we have, first off, the Rapid Strike Urshifu, which is the fighting and water type. We've went for the water terror type on this Urshifu. Again, we need a line of recovery. It hasn't got any recovery options in its move pool, so we've went for that Shell Bell again, level 100, with a moveset of Sword Stance, Leer, Surging Strikes, and Drain Punch. We've got the Unseen ability, so it's not affected by a Protect, but that's not really gonna come into play too much in any of the terror raids. We've got an EV spread, 252 HP, 252 attack with an adamant nature. Basic premise of this move set. Again, it's gonna be a lot like some of the other ones that are similar move sets. Get the swords dances off, three of those, boost max your attack out to plus six. Utilize Leah one or two or three times, whatever you've got room for, and then utilize that Surging Strikes, which is its signature attack, which hits up to three times, and it has every time it lands, it will be a critical hit. So you're always gonna be critical hitting, which is really nice against Pokemon that try to use things like Iron Defense or Acid Armor or boost their defenses like Bulk Up. The critical hits are gonna ignore any of those defense boosts, so you can just hit through those. And with the boosts on your end still staying intact, you're gonna be able to do some really good damage and a really useful water type Pokemon, I feel, going into Terror Raid battles. Something that I would definitely recommend you getting a hold of in Urshifu. Might not be the same set as this, but it is gonna be very useful with that move, Surging Strikes. Next up is its counterpart, the Single Strike Urshifu, the Fighting and Dark type. We went for the Dark Terror typing on this one, and it is very similar to that Rapid Strike one. We've got the Shell Belt item, level 100. Same move set of Sword Stance, Leer, Drain Punch, but this time its signature attack is Wicked Blow. So Wicked Blow doesn't hit multiple times, it hits one time, but it always lands a critical hit. Base 75 power move. Um, and a very, very strong Pokemon. Unseen ability is the same ability, same EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack with an adamant nature. Basically the same premise as the Rapid Strike Urshifu, but this time you're gonna be utilizing Wicked Blow. Utilize Drain Punch when you need some recovery. It uh, gives you that fighting cover as well, but a very good option. And great against a flurry of different Dark Week Pokemon that you're gonna be coming up against in these Terror Raids. Next one is gonna be Uxi, or Uxi, however we're pronouncing it, but one of the Pixie Trio Pokemon. I really love this Pokemon, and I think it got access to a new move this generation, which makes it uh, really viable going into Terror Raids, I feel. It is gonna be Psychic type, so we're gonna play off that Psychic type and we're gonna go for a Psychic Terror typing on it. Shell Bell is the item of choice because again, we haven't got a line of recovery in its moveset, so makes sense that we have this, just prolongs its longevity. It's very good defensively, Uxie, so you're gonna have an easy time setting up with it for the most part. And the moveset itself is Nasty Plot, Amnesia, Stored Power, and Mystical Power. So ability is Levitate, so great going in against things that utilize ground type attacks. You're gonna be immune to those. And an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 special attack, and the rest dumped in defense with a modest nature, of course. So the basic premise of this is gonna be using that Amnesia a few times. So I'll get three Amnesias up, and then you can start actually attacking with the Mystical Power, because every time you use Mystical Power, it boosts your special attack by two stages. Now then, after you've used three of them, you can then Terrastalize and straight away go for that Stored Power, which boosts its attack based off how many stat boosts you've got. So the more stat boosts you've got, the greater the power, the more damage you're gonna do. If you're familiar with using something like Slow Bro, Slow King, from some of our other raid videos, you'll you'll be familiar with how this strategy works, but it's a lot quicker to get to that Terrasalize stage because of that mystical power move that you've got access to. And it also means you've got a nice way to not have to always rely on the stored power if your stats get removed at some point, which they inevitably will through the raid battle, then you're not really that screwed at that point. You can go for maybe a couple of nasty plots or just one nasty 
anti plot and then start firing off those mystical powers straight away again and it's not a bad attacking move it is base 70 so it's not like terrible um and if you are terrestrialized at that point and you have got a nasty plot up already you're still going to be doing really good damage and a really nice way to run oxy i think in these terror raid battles and it will do a good job against a majority of these psychic weak pokemon and the next one is going to be galarian moltres yes this is the shiny version so the dark and fire flying type pokemon we've got the dark terror typing on it so just bear in mind if you are going up against something that is using ground type attacks after you terrestrialize into that dark terror typing you will be susceptible to those ground type attacks once again uh, it should be level 100 um, but this one is level 70 we've got the shell belt item on it for a line of recovery here and a move set of nasty plot taunt air slash and a fiery wrath with the berserk ability so every time with the berserk ability you hit 50 percent or lower then the berserk ability activates and you get a special attack boost to your special attack uh, we've got a modest nature we've got 252 in hp 252 in special attack just to max that out and then the rest in defense but the basic premise is you've got the taunt to shut down any set of options any disrupting options from the opposing threat then you can go for those nasty plots max out your special attack and then start firing off the fiery wraths that it has access to base 90 dark type attack it does have the ability to flinch the opponent as well but i don't know if that will come into play if the shield is up of course it won't but you might have a chance if the shield isn't intact against the raid boss um. Right, next up is the final Galarian bird for this video, and it is going to be Galarian Articuno, the psychic and flying type. We have went for the psychic terror typing on this one. We've given an expert belt because we do have a line of recovery on the moveset. Again, ignore the level on this one. It should be set to level 100, but just make sure that you've done that before you go into any terror raids. We've got the moveset here, though, of Recover, Calm Mind, Hurricane, and Freezing Glare and we have an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 special attack with the rest put in defense and a modest nature. And we have that competitive ability on it as well. So it acts a little bit like Defiant. If you take any stat drops, then it boosts the special attack at two stages every time you take um, a stat drop, which is really nice, making you very strong quite quickly. You've got the Calm Mind. It's the only setup option that you've got on the Galarian Articuno, but it does play quite nicely on this set. Of course, you've got Hurricane as a coverage for flying type attacks, but you're going to be primarily relying on that Freezing Glare, which has the chance to freeze your opponent. Um, a, basic, a pretty basic set. Um, not one of my favorite ones, but I do think it is quite effective in certain situations. But there are a lot of psychic type Pokemon that we've had access to in this format. So you could go down a different route if you wanted, maybe go for a flying terror type on it, and then utilize that hurricane a little bit more, playing off that calm mind, the recover there as well. So there are some options that you could go with on the Galarian Articuno, but this set should work pretty well uh, regardless. But like I say, there are a lot of psychic options. But if you did want to use the Galarian Articuno, this is a nice build for you to go in with next up is the genies so we've got thunderous to kick us off with we're going for that incarnate form we've got the shell bell it offers us a line of recovery as always with that electric terror typing on their level 100 the moveset here is agility nasty plot electro ball and wild bolt storm which is its new signature attack which is base 100 and it has the chance to paralyze an opponent every time it's used this is a little bit shaky on the accuracy side of things but otherwise it is very good so the basic premise is to nasty plot up three times you're going to go for agility three times and then utilize electro ball which plays off the speed difference between you and the Togga pokemon so you'll be actually max speed so you should be doing maximum damage with that electro ball and doing some big damage you've got the wild bolt storm as well to kind of fall back on if you need to you've got the prankster ability so you're always going to be able to get those stat boosting moves off before your opponent does anything and uh, we've got an EV spread of 252 HP with 252 special attack with a modest nature and that is the thunderous next up is the tornadoes which is the pure flying type with the flying terror type on it again no line of recovery on this one but we do have the shell bell item uh, we've got the moveset of rain dance nasty plot taunt and then hurricane 
We've got the Prankster ability again, so we can guarantee to get that rain off first turn with that Prankster ability that gives uh, priority to any status moves. Also with the Taunt as well, and then the Nasty Plot. So you wanna get the Rain Dance up as soon as possible, and then get three Nasty Plots off, and then start firing the Hurricanes off, which are gonna be 100% accurate in the rain. A very strong flying type attack, base 110 power. Um, like I say, in the rain, it's 100% accurate, and it has the chance to confuse the opposing Pokemon as well. Modest Nature with a 252 HP, 252 Special Attack, and probably one of the best pure flying type options that we've got access to in Scarlet and Violet that are going to be good going into these higher star rated terror raids. Next up is Landorus, the final genie for us to cover in today's video and it is the ground and flying type. We're going for the incarnate version as well here for good reason and you'll see in a moment when we get to the moveset. We've got the ground terror typing as well and then the shell bell as the item of choice. Makes sense, we keep saying it, line of recovery there. So we've got the moveset here of Swords Dance, Leer, Sandstorm and Earthquake with the ability Sand Force. So Sand Force gives rock, ground and steel types a 1.3 boost to their attacking moves in a sandstorm and it also provides additional chip. The five turns that it's active uh, mean you get a little bit of additional damage with it. So the basic premise is going to be sword stance three turns then go for those layers then set your sandstorm up and then fire off your earthquakes. We've got an EV spread on this one of 252 attack and 252 HP with the rest put into special defense. Like I say, the basic premise is get the sword stances up, layers off to reduce the defense stat, sandstorm to boost that sand force ability on the Landorus Incarnate, and then utilize your earthquake. You can also stack that with the ground terror typing, but a really nice option. I think there aren't that many ground types in the format right now that are really useful going into terror raid, so it's a nice option to have going in. And of course, with that initial ground and flying typing going into the raid, it does give you a pretty unique option Next up is another legendary from Generation 3. We finally have ground on in these games and it looks amazing in these games. I love the look of it. We've went for the ground terror typing on it. We've given it the shell bell because it gives it a line of recovery. It's always level 100 with the moveset of Sword Stance, Rock Slide, Fire Punch and Precipice Blades. We have the ability Drought on there. 252 HP, 252 attacking EVs with an adamant nature. Now, Groudon doesn't have too many options that it can kind of rely on to set up or reduce the defenses on the opposing Pokemon, but it does get Swords Dance, so you can max out that attacking stat that's pretty high, sky, sky high already, and then utilize Precipice Blades, which is its signature attack. Um, doing really big damage. The only bad drawback is it's not the best accuracy wide. 85% accurate is pretty whiffy, but uh, most of the time you're gonna be hitting, and especially once you've trashed lines, you're gonna be doing big damage. Fire Punch plays off the sun that will be active through the drought ability, and then Rock Slide gives you coverage for things that are uh, immune to the ground typing or fire typing if you go into a terror raid, but for the most part, when you're going into a terror raid, you kind of know what you're going up against, so there shouldn't be any problems, and you're most most of the time be using precipice blades and maybe the fire punch for a little bit of chip if needed if you need that 100 accurate move at the end of the game but that is the ground on like i say and just because it is a legendary pokemon it's going to be able to do work it's going to be able to set up because of its general stats and a very good option especially online as well with friends next up the counterpart to ground on is kyogre from gen 3 and this one is actually from gen 3 this is from bevan again i've got to give him a big shout out for, thank you so much for sharing this kyogre with us for today's video it has got the shell bell item as a line of recovery and again going to just be a very straightforward set we've got calm mind rain dance origin pulse and water spout with an ev spread 252 hp 252 attack with a modest nature and that ability of drizzle basic premise is going to be calm minding up once you've got a few calm minds up then you can really go to town with the water spouts just bear in mind the water spout is reliant on your hp so the more hp HP, you've got the more damage this move does the less HP you get the base power of that attack goes down so if you are around half HP or if you've lost a chunk of HP then you can rely on origin pulse to do enough damage you can recover health with the shell belt item of course and then you can utilize that water spout once again if the drizzle runs out after five turns then you've got the rain dance where you can set it up again and take full advantage of Kyogre's 
Mammoth attack stats with its water typing and a very good water typing as well with that water terror typing. And next up is the other Gen 3 legendary and it's going to be Rayquaza. And this looks insane in these games. I'm so happy to have this across a very strong uh, Pokemon. And it has got the Shell Bell item. We went for the flying terror type on it. And we have the move set of Sword Stance, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, and then Dragon Ascent. Dragon Ascent, it is its signature attack. It does have a bit of a drawback where it drops the defense and the special defense every time you use it. But it is going to be hitting so hard after you have Sword Stance. You've got coverage in Dragon Claw and Earthquake. If you want to kind of lean on those moves a little bit more before you can Terrastalize, then it is a nicer option. Then once you are Terrastalize, you went for that full flying type then you can use that Dragon Ascent at plus six attack and you're gonna be doing absolutely incredible damage. Got an EV spread of 252 HP just for maximizing longevity and then 252 attack EVs uh, with an animate nature and the rest put in special defense and we have that airlock ability which eliminates any effects of weather uh, on the field. So that'd be sand, that would be ice, uh, that'd be the hail or the snow as it's called now, uh, sun and then the sandstorm. Uh, so it negates all of the effects. The weather stays intact, but any effects benefiting from the weather don't happen. So uh, it's a really nice ability for that, and that is the Rayquaza. Hasn't got too many options for lowering uh, any of the stats on the opposing side of the field, but that's for good reason. I mean, the legendaries are so much stronger than the regular Pokemon, they don't really need to rely on that. So Rayquaza are a nice option. If it is one of your favorites, this is a nice build for you to take in and utilize in these Terror Raid battles. And I did tell a lie. I thought we'd done all the Hisuian Pokemon, but saving one of the best ones for last, and that is Sneasler. You would imagine it's probably not that great going into Terror Raid battles because it looks pretty frail and it hasn't got the best defensive stats, but it's actually surprisingly really strong against the right Terror types, especially those six star terror type raids that are fairy terror types or um, grass terror types. This is a really nice option to fall back on and Sneezer can be uh, surprisingly very strong against the right opponent. Got the Shell Bell item for a line of recovery on here. Poison terror typing with a moveset of Sword Stance, Screech, Close Combat and its signature attack, Diaclaw. We've got the Unburden ability on there, but it can be anything. And then a uh, EV spread of 252 HP, 252 attack with an Adamant Nature. Again, we've seen the combination in past videos that I've covered with other builds of Sword Stance and Screech. Get the Sword Stance up three times, maximize your attack stat because it's boosting it two times every time you use it. Then go for those Screeches on your opponent that lower the defense of their defense stat by two times every time you use it. And then go for that Diaclaw attack if it is the most a super effective attack that you've got. Base 80 power um, and it also has the chance to poison, paralyze or put your opponent to sleep every time you use it as well as having a high critical hit ratio as well. So it's a pretty strong attack. Um, and once you're terrestrialized with the Sneasler and you've got all those stat kind of defectors off you're going to be doing a lot of damage and it's surprisingly very strong in raid battles next up is mew a gen 1 mythical pokemon finally in scarlet and violet we've went for the psychic terror typing to play up that psychic typing we've got the shell bell item on there level 100 with a move set of acid spray nasty plot amnesia and stalled power so the basic premise of this move set is going to be go for turn one yeah, to turn three, you wanna try and get three nasty plots off, boost your special attack by three stages, and then go for three acid sprays, which will reduce the special defense on the opposing Pokemon by two stages every time you use it. The nice thing about acid spray is it's an attacking move. So it will hit through the shield, even if the shield is up. So if your stats get nullified, or if they remove any stat drops on their side of the field, and they set the shield up, you can still go for those acid sprays and boost uh, the chances of your damage doing more. Then go for, if you want at that stage, you can go for amnesias as well. And then the main thing to do is go for that stored power, which is gonna play off the amount of boosts uh, that you've got onto your Mew, like we've mentioned with other builds. Before we've got the Shell Bell as a line of recovery because Mew unfortunately does not get access to Soft Boiled anymore in Scarlet and Violet. So the only option that we've got going into Terror Raids at the moment is gonna be that Shell Bell. We've got the EV spread of 252 HP, 252 Special Attack with the rest put in defense with that desynchronized ability as well. So if you get burned, if you get paralyzed, if you get poisoned, it'll do the same to the target Pokemon as well. And to finish off in fitting form is the Gen 1 Legendary Mew 2, a bit like the Mew, slightly different, same terror typing, psychic, same base typing, psychic, 
haven't got the shell bell, we've got the expert valve for a little bit more damage there on the Mu2 because we've got a line of recovery and the move set is going to be recover amnesia and nasty plot and stalk power very similar same premise pretty much go for those nasty plots from turn one to three from uh, four to six you're going to go for the amnesias so you're boosting maxing out your attack stat maxing out your your special defense stat and then you're going to launch off those stalk powers use recovery when you need to and it has an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 special attack with the ability pressure. And like I say, with the psychic terror typing, once you've set up, you could start launching those stored powers off and you're gonna be doing a lot of damage with Mew too. Very similar to the Mew, just a slightly different option. And if you prefer one to the other, or if you've only got available one in your game, then at least you've got two builds to refer to in this video that you can utilize and have a lot of success with when you go into these terror raid battles. So that that is everything for today's video. There's a lot of builds that we featured today and I hope you found them useful. If you have, please drop a like, do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. And it shows, it doesn't matter where we are in the world, what we're doing, nothing stops us getting this content out. We are actually a little bit later, but with traveling and other things, that's why I, I'm a bit late getting this content out, but I hope you find it useful. Thank you very much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day. If you catch the event over the weekend, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you're watching this afterwards, watch the VODs and uh, take care of yourselves and I'll see you all in a video very soon. So until then, friends, take care and bye-bye.